Okay, so I wanted to do a general overview of this before I really started taking it apart. There's a couple interesting little design choices that you need to take in mind before you tear down one of these Phantom 3s. You can see here, this is where the brushless gimbal went on the main body. And I think I'm just going to remove that just to be thorough. But the real reason I took that off was to get to these screws, which are there to hold the landing gear off. Now, the other thing is the landing gear have antennas in them. So here's an antenna poking through, and you can see it on the landing gear. There's another one on this other side. But the one I'm really interested in is this guy, which comes through and is actually secured with screws at the bottom. So it looks like some sort of patch antenna or termination, but I'm not really sure. Other than that, on each arm, there's four screws there, surely to hold the motors in, two Torx T7 maybe, and then one more at the base. So I know all of these don't hold the external shell on, so it's going to be interesting figuring out which one actually just holds the plastic on and which one is anchoring in circuit board components and stuff like that. So the first order of business here is going to be removing the gimbal mounting plate. And so to do that, I'm using a hex two here. The next order of business is to remove the landing gear, being careful not to rip out those antennas. So I'm actually gonna pop the antennas out of the landing gear before I unscrew them. And they're actually secured with a little bit of glue. So note to self. And these screws are a Torx T7. Okay, so I've gotten this side. And now I'm gonna flip this around and do the ones on the back side. And it's a little bit tricky to see, but before I actually take the hex heads off, I'm gonna actually remove this little antenna here. It looks like a thicker antenna. Interestingly enough, I was wrong about what's under this small cover. Just from looking at it after pulling the plastic off, it kind of looks like a gyro. I'm actually hesitant to pull that all the way out because it's very strongly gooped in. So I might just see if I can unplug it at the base inside the actual craft. Okay, moving on, I'm gonna resume taking off this landing gear here. Next step looks to me like removing these screws in the arm. I'm guessing, oh, you'll notice I already took that out because I was figuring out what size of driver I needed. I'm guessing that this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw actually hold the top plastic cover on. All right, so I've gotten those screws off. Now there's two things worth noting here. One of them is that this inner screw is gonna be very, very hard to get out. And if you're not careful, you'll end up stripping it. So just be aware of that. The other thing is that it's important to take the landing gear off. And now you can see why, because there's actually, you can sort of pull on this plastic cover, but it doesn't wanna come off. That's because there's plastic retaining clips holding it in right about here. So what you have to do to open up these retaining clips, if you look inside this hole, you really have to look around to find it. But once you locate the clip, you can just put a screwdriver in there and push on it to pop the clip out. You should also be careful not to accidentally cut or yank on a wire. And you'll see here that I actually got the clip to pop off there. And you can separate that case. It's also worth noting if you wanna take your top shell off, you unfortunately have to peel your stickers off. So goodbye beautiful red sticker. Luckily the kit comes with more stickers. So once you pop the first few clips in, there's two clips in each arm. You can carefully just pry it and you'll release the center clips, which are located on this point at every arm junction. And so it's a little scary because you really have to give it a yank, but then the shell will separate. So I'm gonna remove the shell and then I'll check back in when I've got the top okay, part Okay, so off. after the cracking the case and removing the top panel, I wanted to show what that top part actually looks like. It is mostly just plastic, but there actually is what is definitely the GPS antenna on the top and you can actually see the outline of it there. Interestingly enough, they look like they're doing a lot of shielding on the GPS antenna as well as the lines going to the main board. My guess is this is to keep it from interfering with the other electronics 
and keep the other noisy electronics such as the motor from interfering with the GPS signal. So it's actually under this putty, which is got a layer of copper sandwiched in the middle. So that's basically like shielding sticky putty stuff. Okay, so this is gonna be the main board of the DJI Phantom 3. And one thing you can notice almost immediately in comparison to the older craft like the Phantom 2 is that everything is on one board. So this could spell serious trouble for uh, someone who has, say, a speed controller go out. And you can see all of the speed controller modules. So each motor control is right here. There's six MOSFETs, so three on the high side, three on the low side, as well as a controller. And we have what looks to be the radio module shielded under an RF can similar to the gimbal. And these two antennas actually are the antennas that pop out and run down the leg. Now the most interesting thing here, everything on here is pretty standard and it's actually really well divided into chunks. It's very easy to discern what's going on with each part. But basically the most interesting part to me is this guy. And my guess is, and I can't be sure yet, I haven't actually looked at it. My guess is this is the IMU, which actually senses the position of the craft. So one other note, that thicker antenna that comes down the landing gear, I originally guessed was some sort of patch antenna. It's not, it's actually the compass. So the compass magnetometer runs down that and runs down the leg of the Phantom 3. And that way they can avoid interference generated by the motors as well as by any of the circuitry on board. So that's a really clever solution actually. I was curious how they got such great compass calibration when there are so many electronics in here. Another thing to note is that all of the connections are actually soldered to the motors. So there are no plugs going to the motors. This is probably the, for the better. Uh, repairability on this craft is already pretty bad. It's really hard to get apart as I demonstrated. And honestly, I would rather have soldered wires as opposed to wires which could unplug during flight. My best guess as to what the item in this shielded module is, my guess is that's the IMU accelerometer gyro unit. And it's hard to see, you won't be able to see, but there's a little bit of foam actually isolating whatever's in the top part from the bottom part. And it's also actually soldered on its own little daughter board, which is then soldered onto the main circuit board. Overall, other than that, I think there's a couple of power supplies. This looks to be a switch mode power supply, as well as a couple smaller ones around. That could also just be uh, LC filtering. I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to disconnect this and actually flip this board over. I'm gonna unscrew these motors so that I can lift them out and we can flip this whole unit over, hopefully. Now I'm a little disappointed in one thing. They just melted some plastic posts onto the uh, circuit board itself. So when this mold was created, it actually had spaces for little towers of plastic. I don't know what the right word is. And then it's really easy and it's common in cheaper electronics, but I figured since the budget on this one is a little bit higher, it's common you just melt it down with a soldering iron and it anchors whatever's in place. Well, that's not a big deal here because you can just sort of scrape it off and then attach it with hot glue later. That is a little disappointing. It would have been two extra screws, I guess. Um, might just be me being picky. So there's four screws anchoring the PCB, the main board that I can see. I already took two of them out because I thought the camera was rolling and it wasn't, so I'm going to do the other two. These screws actually have a little silicon piece on them to dampen the vibration onto the PCB. This is what the backside looks like, and this is by far the most interesting thing I've encountered on this entire craft. There are all of three things on the backside but there's actually a micro SD card. I don't know if that micro SD holds configuration parameters, if it holds a serial number. It might even be acting as the, but I'm really tempted to pop it into my computer and DD it. 
I doubt it's computer readable. I, I very much doubt that. But even if I could get a copy of the card, um, I don't know how many gigs it is. Let's see if I can carefully pop that out. It's sort of gunked down here. It's really gunked down on there. If anyone wants to take their Phantom 3 apart and tell me what's on that SD card, that'd be awesome. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more, but I'm not super confident that I can actually get it out of there without damaging the card or the board, which I'd eliminates the point of taking it out if you can't actually end up reading reading the card later on anyway. And we're on to the last real part of the Phantom 3. Uh, all that's really left... There's a couple small things. So the first of them, these black and gray wires are the same wires that leave the gimbal. So these were <laughs> these were the wires that really puzzled me. There's the, they're those coax connectors. And I was really confused when I saw them. I had no idea what they were. Well, question answered. They go to dual patch antennas. So there's a patch antenna on this side and a patch antenna on this side. And I don't know if they're 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz, but they look to be small and fairly directional and so you get one semi-spherical radiation pattern on one side and one on the other side and these no doubt transmit the Wi-Fi signal also way down in there we've got one small board this is going to be the USB connector so you can actually plug your computer into the USB connector right below that little metal sticker that says phantom on it and that's all that is it's the USB connection so we've got USB, our coax connectors, and the actual controller cables that go to the gimbal. Okay, so I do hope you were satisfied with the depth of this teardown. Please excuse the nice view of my tripod arms. That's actually how I hold my camera above whatever I'm taking apart. I'd say this is about as far apart as I can take this thing without permanently ruining it, which I'm not super interested in. I'd like to fly it at least once or twice. Anyways, if you have any questions, please leave them. I know it was a little bit higher level than my usual teardowns. I didn't have a chance to really look at too many of the ICs or the circuit design, but this could have been a year long if I had decided to do that. And sneaky DJI liked to cover their parts with black spray paint ink stuff. If you have any comments, please leave them. And other than that, yeah, uh, please like this video and uh, subscribe if you're interested in this sort of content.